Hello and welcome back to the 10th edition of the EU West Challenger Series, currently in the Grand Final with Copenhagen Wolves versus Smart People, and I got their name right. <laughs> we had to struggle. <laughs> I did indeed. I'm Pulse, I'm joined by Spillington. Hey everybody, it's looking good right now. I've got to admit, I am slightly slow to click spectate, so I'm still on the loading screen. If anything happens over the next 5 or 6 seconds, do let me know. Uh, I wouldn't expect too much early aggression. I mean, both teams have a decent level 1, so... We'd have to be a little bit careful to make sure they didn't get in the initiate from, say, the Thresh Hook or the Ari Charm. As it happens, though, uh, well, I am still loading in, so Pulse, is anything happening at all? Not really, and you've done a me where I just, like, I start casting and I'm like, you know what? Oh yeah, I need to start spectating the game, and it takes me like a good minute, and then I miss like the level 1 fight, and it gets incredibly awkward. But so far, nothing's really happening. We do see an invader coming from, from Copenhagen Wolves to the enemy red buff, and doesn't look like anyone's going to approach that first, but they are still waiting with four members, with that crit arrow from Ash, probably taking the volley as well. A lot of upfront burst if they catch someone else. Zerom in that top sort of tri-bush area, so he hasn't quite spotted them just yet. He is out of their vision radius and it will just be stealing away this red buff and uh, it doesn't look like Jerome's going to go ahead and check it either. Yeah they're not going to know that that's happened unless Unlimited and Reckless choose to come in from a slightly dodgy angle here. Doesn't look like they were, well actually no Reckless is coming he's hooked around that wall there so I wonder if Kennen may smell a rat there and get the uh, yeah you can see Jarvan is actually now heading into the enemy jungle I think maybe they they were aware that that was happening even before Reckless did that but uh Certainly at the moment looking a little bit iffy. Jarvan going to be getting his support to, to you know help him out with that. Make sure there's no counter invade. And they do have that dual lane support right now. So uh, you know, no need to be concerned with him. He's going to pick up that. He's going to be heading back out. And now he may look to gank. But uh, I've got to say, it's not going to be easy to gank right now. No, they traded red buffs and he's, well, he's in fact just going to carry on counter jungling. He doesn't know where to gank. What's the best option? Take some more, take some more EXP, take some more gold and cripple Evelyn while in the process. Shook actually going to find him. He wasn't in the vision radius as uh, just around Evelyn, but in fact, he will just clear out the camp. And falling down into her own jungle, pink ward at the red buff means that Aratos might be, uh, Aratos, sorry, might be looking to maybe pick off Shook. I think Shook has read this though. Pink comes down. So, junglers both know where each other are, or at least Evelyn kind of assumes that Jarvan is around the area. He is looking for this bot, a gank, uh, gank, which is what you expect. Three versus one, or that's what they assume. Youngbrook immediately gets exhausted. Uh, him of Valor comes out, Flag and Drag comes down as well. Youngbrook safe to fight another day as Shook comes in to make sure they can't carry on that dive. So a good read there by Shook on what the intention was. Unlimited actually landing a hook in the top lane, but he's taking a lot of damage from the tower there. That might force him out of lane. Uh, regardless though, a good read there by Shook as to what the intentions were of Artatros. He read which way he was going, but also nice play by Artatros in really capitalizing on Shook's comparatively weak dueling at this stage of the game by just walking through his jungle and saying, well, you can try and stop me if you want. I've got my dual lane for support, which is more than you've got, and I'm a stronger duelist. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to steal all your stuff now and take your lunch money. Yeah, it was very clever, uh, clever counterplay because they knew, okay, they've probably taken our red buff, but even if they haven't, we can invade theirs, put down the pink ward, and it's like they almost premeditated that, that movement. So it's very clever because it's a very Evelyn specific play, and plus the fact that they went for the swap up, it was kind of on the fly as well. So, really interesting so far because. Uh, of course, Copenhagen Wolves are the favourites coming into this game. Shook has been revealed by that pink core. They are aggressing onto Samix, but again, Arcane Flash keeps them very manoeuvrable. It's been very difficult to gank in the early game, and Evelyn not going to get too much done there. Mid lane might uh, might be something to gank in the near future. Atratos looks for, well, not a gank at top lane, but more to secure it until Kenan gets back. Yeah, and at the moment, the, the pushing race is definitely going in the favour of Reckless and Unlimited. They are doing a lot of damage to that tower, looking there for the uh, for the surprise hook kind of thing on Artatros. Did not manage to get it though, so uh, I'll just continue to push this out with that Doran's Blade Ash. Uh, and my cat is attacking me, so I just, it's, just ter it's terrible today. Yeah, all, all the animals are just all over Spuddington, and uh, I really want Riot to make a surprise party... Uh, fresh. I mean, I think that would be a fantastic. It's going to be like Surprise Party Fiddle, but 
a lot more violent and he might be a clown and uh, be considerably more scary. So Exile in the mid lane is shaping up against uh, Extra at the moment and there's no real CS advantage to either of these players but Lissandra has in fact, in fact meanwhile bottom Rydal drops right low, I saw him flashing up red, you know the top lane that is Rom and Arctos look to reclaim the kill, pick up immediately with Dragon Strike, moving on to a limited as well, didn't choose to go for that dive, Dragon Drag was on cooldown and Rom didn't have the opportunity to stun but two kills don't go down in quick succession. Yeah, both teams there, you know, seeing where people have committed and making sure they can then capitalize on that commitment. Unlimited in this top lane has to be very, very careful right now. He doesn't have a lot of wave here, and he also doesn't have a lot of health. So uh, I suspect they would be willing to go for that uh, engage under the tower if they wanted to. But now they have to be a little bit more careful because Reckless is coming back in. So if they engage on Unlimited, they could overstay. So I'd be surprised, I wouldn't be surprised to see Unlimited. I'm just trying to bait that out, be a little bit more aggressive. Certainly get in position to try and land a speculative hook, but regardless, he will be there, and now Reckless is there to kind of get that farm back up again. Yeah, actually, it's just generally when you're in that one versus two lane, it's not uncommon to see the jungler uh, come up there or even down the bottom as well, just to provide some assistance, allow them to get to that sort of level when they are stronger. I mean, a typical example of that would be Vladimir. We were talking about this the other day, Spillington. When he gets to level three or level four, he can start sustaining himself so that he doesn't necessarily uh, need to... Uh, get, that, get that assistance, but he needs to get to that level so he can sustain himself and farm on the turret, etc. Because we didn't see that yesterday, and in one of the games we saw Vlad, um, he only had like 6 CS to like 20 on, on the opposing AD carry, so you really need to make that happen in the early game as a jungler, and that commits a lot of time as well. Yeah, and it seems at the moment that Jarvan is making a, putting in a lot of effort to this top lane. Kennen's going to hit 6 relatively soon, and with that ultimate, they are going to have a lot of potential to try and take Reckless out, stop that farm train, and stop the late game carry of Ash being really, really good. Uh, it's worth noting, by the way, Ash actually in the top lane, they have gone in. The Lantern is down, though. He's not going to achieve anything, and Death Sentence comes down. But Ash, as a late game carry, people underestimate. She has extra range. And people say, well, she has some steroid in her kit, so she's not that strong. But actually, she has one of the highest base attack speeds in the game. And base attack speed is related to how much damage you deal with your attack speed items. So in the late game full build scenario, she actually puts out a surprising amount of damage. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of interesting of, of like the maths of how AD carries work. It's like multiplicative between the items, but I won't get into that because I'm pretty sure everyone would... Uh... We'd be pretty bored by the mathematics, but um, for Captain the rest Autism. Of it, Captain Autism, indeed. So, right now, I'm kind of looking towards uh, either the skirmishes or what the next move is for both of these teams, because typically in these one versus two lanes, your main objective is to push down the tower. So far, the bottom tower is very healthy, and in fact, the top tower is about uh, down to half. So, if they pick up this top tower, or well, Drum is level six right now, so I'm going to keep my eye on that. He just has the slicing male drum, but um, what they what they do have is the, um, if they take down this tower, they can swap their duo lane into the bot lane again, and then they'll also have the presence over dragons, so it's really just down to timings right now, and honestly, they should be able to pick up this tower fairly shortly. I mean, Jarvin's on his way to the top lane trying to stymie that push, and he might even go for the gank as well. Cataclysm straight into slicing Maelstrom, especially if he can lock Jerome in there as well. It'd be very deadly on that top lane. Yeah, I, I'm just curious if they're going to go for this in the near future because Shook may be able to tell what's going to happen, although he has to recall right now. Going to be probably able to pick up that Spirit of the Elder Lizard very soon, if not already, and will heal up and then look to go top, but he could be too late if they go for that now. They're not going to go for it though. Looks like uh, the, he's just a little bit too scared of the warding potential in that bottom lane though. That sound looks getting aggressive. I think he may have aggressively arcane shifted, but regardless, didn't get anything done. Yeah, I'm somewhat surprised that uh, Astrotos hasn't gone into that top lane yet, because they will be pushing very hard indeed, and Jerome's going to need some help. He does have the Slicing Maelstrom, and as I mentioned, they have both of those killer ultimates, and Astrotos, in fact, is going up to that top lane. He's seeing his opportunity. Ping has gone down, and I think they realize where he is at the moment. They are looking for this engage to happen. Slicing Maelstrom comes down pretty preemptively. They are still kicking this up, though, and he's locked Jerome outside of the cat. Some circle. Rex is still trading off. Box comes down as well. Dragon Strike picks up the kill. Flash comes out from Jarvan, keeping himself uh, healthy. And Drum actually picks up the uh, assessing the kill. But meanwhile, bot lane another kill comes out onto Shuck, looking for a kill down at bot. And all those pink wards are providing, uh, are seeming very difficult for Evelyn to maneuver around. 
Yeah, and that was a nice teleport gank there from Exter. He may lose a little bit of farm for it, but it's going to be deadly worth it. He's actually going for an early Abyssal Scepter, which I do like to see on this Ari against Lissandra. But specifically in that matchup, you have to be very careful about the gank potential, and it's even more valuable to go Abyssal if the enemy jungler is that Evelyn, because most of her damage is magic, so you're kind of double dipping for your defense in that gank situation, which is really, really nice to see. Jerem there going to be picking up that top tower and that's going to be useful for him. He will now back out and look to buy some items. He's going to need to get back there though because Reckless and that uh, Unlimited there Thresh actually stopping the recall could mean the end of that top tower. He's not going to be able to get back there in time to save it so he's actually just going to have to stay in which isn't a good situation. In the bot lane though action is kicking off. We've got Sona in trouble. Going to take a lot of damage. Young Buck going to be backing out now but is actually possibly a little bit early on that. Salmon's going to be getting chased by Shook. Has popped that barrier and will get taken down by the hate spike. Yeah, nice double kill coming in then. Trip was literally just waiting in the wings and Youngbuck is so, so good at reacting to those ganks with Renekton because he does, of course, have that stun on Ruthless Predator and also his trading potential as well with Don. He didn't have it at the moment, but just his general kit is extremely strong in those situations just to soak up some of that damage and Shook can provide the damage as well from their half. And another kill goes down, meanwhile, on the top lane, that's how it falls as well. So Rob dropping, uh, dropping extremely low, Volley picks up the kill, and Reckless actually flashing that kill as well. Astrotoast finds himself in the top lane, just flying and drags unlimited. Can't really go deeper than that, but just showing his presence at the top lane. And it was really down to them disrupting that recall from Kennen, as you um, pointed out, Spunnington, because if he had managed to recall, okay, the tower might have fallen, but he might have gotten there in time as well. Maybe Astrotoast could have filled in the blanks. But by stopping the recall, he had to stay in when he was lower HP and that just opened up the ability to pick him up and the tower as well. Worth noting in the middle lane extra did just blow his ultimate and force Lissandra back but she's gonna have that flask will pop all of the charges and restore a fair bit of health. She did not herself use her ultimate however she has fallen a little bit behind on experience she will be have a brief window though when she gets back into that lane and you can look to see Shook try and capitalize on that where you'll have Exa without that ultimate and without that flash and the frozen tomb available for Exa. In fact, it looks like Exa may just go back. That's a mouthful. We've got Exa versus Exa. Yeah, that's, that's uh, very confusing indeed. And having Shook just heading up into the jungle once again to down those aggressive wards. We do have Drake available, and it looks like Youngbook will indeed be starting up as well. The entire lineup of Copenhagen wards around that area. Well, they must have realized by now, but not very much more people can do about it. I mean, this rival tries his best to find man crescendo, and uh, they, they land all the ultimates, but it's just a good timing push coming from Copenhagen Wolves, meaning that there's uh, no re real reaction play coming from smart people, but I'm not entirely sure why Atratos is sticking around. Flag comes down, Youngbook looking for this pick to happen, wants the stun to come out, and Copenhagen Wolves picking up another objective. Yeah, and they're starting to roam around together. They're starting to get some momentum going right now. Kennen is pushing out in this top lane, so he may be able to put a decent bit of damage on that tower. Shook is in the mid lane, and Exter smells a rat. He's trying to get away from this, but the stealth from Evelyn is so powerful. If she can sneak up on you, you are in a lot of trouble. But she's going to get out of uh, oh, blimey bot lane, there's a big thing going on here. Artatros is in a lot of trouble, has backed out of there. Box is down and Rydal will actually not be picking up that kill. Samek's going to be backing out as well, but uh, I'm dumb. I missed the start of that. Shook is coming in, though. This is dangerous. He's got that Agony's Embrace for the slow if he wants it. Won't do a lot of damage at this high HP, but he's actually being a little bit greedy there, not blowing it. Samex is actually going to get ulted after all, but Shook will just kind of wander off awkwardly. Yeah, that was kind of odd from Shuck. I mean, he popped the Dark Frenzy fairly early and then also got slowed after that. Meanwhile, top lane put, uh, puts the herd onto Zeron. And he might actually look to pick up the kill here. Lightning Rush comes down, and in fact, he should be good to go. Also had the sli uh, Slicing Maelstrom, and maybe Jungkook was just trying to get that out of Kennen because it's a big ultimate to pick up at this stage in the game. But in a bot lane, it was kind of odd from Shuck. It's like, as you said, he was being very greedy with his Agony's Embrace. He didn't want to use it, and by the time he thought, actually, they might escape, I'll just use it, and then they were already back at the tower. So, it, in a sense, it was like a wasted ultimate because he didn't have to use it at that point, but he still felt he had to use it to pick up a kill. Youngfoot, meanwhile, is uh, using Cold and Meek just to put some damage onto Jarvan, but has actually just alerted the in entire enemy team of smart people to his presence. In fact, he's going to back off. Extra did react, but they couldn't quite collapse on him fast enough. 
Yeah, we'll force Jerem to kind of return uh, to help out Jarvan there, but uh, he's, you know, losing it. So that's nothing too serious, but Young Buck is waiting in the brush here. This could be dangerous. Actually, Jerem has a red buff of his own, so uh, Young Buck coming in will pick that up with the Culver Meek, forcing the ultimate out of Jerem. He has been stunned and will be running for his life, but can he get out of this? No, he cannot. The Flash and the Dominus damage, meanwhile, a bot. Another kill happened. Did you see what happened? I didn't know. Rex just got picked up again, though, and he's currently 1-4, and four, and this is really good for smart people, because they aren't, like, 1k behind. Equal in uh, kills, equal in towers, but obviously the farm differential has shown through. But having Reckless 1-4 at this stage in the game was actually really good for them, because mostly Copenhagen walls fit their composition around Reckless. This time, less uh, less so, because they do have a strong team fighting potential. As we've said before, it's very all-in, and Limited actually using the play. Dark Passage comes down, but comes out. Lands up to Samut, beautiful lead, and Samut's just trading off right now, but the Crescendo comes across both of them. Shook still trading off, picks up with the ra uh, Ravage straight into another hate spike, falling to Rydal. The slow from the red buff is enough, Flash comes out as well, another Ravage comes off cooldown, picking up the double kill. Yeah, that was actually a little bit greedy on several people's parts there. I think Unlimited was a little bit greedy trying to stay in and do more damage. I think Sona was a little bit greedy holding onto that crescendo cooldown for a little bit longer than perhaps was necessary, although that did catch out Unlimited, so, you know, hindsight being 2020. Uh, and in the meantime, Shook is going to take out that bot tower. That's a very nice pickup for the team Copenhagen Wolves. It's going to give them that map control in the bottom and the dragon control as a result of that. But, uh, you know, all overall working out in the favor of Shook. And actually, yeah, the other thing that was greedy was that Sona didn't flash out very early. Even though Ezreal had gotten that one kill, they tried to fight it out. But uh, Shook was a little bit too strong in that 1v1 scenario, 2v1 scenario. Yeah, Reckless Arrow coming mid lane, lands straight onto Exter. This might be the lead into a kill. Frozen Tomb comes out, actually lands onto Exter. Great counter gun with the flag drag straight into Cataclysm, but locked himself in there with Exler. Dark Patch just comes down. He does have that escape route. Looks to pick up the kill on Exter before that happens. No, Reckless now, the line being very aggressive indeed. But the slicing melt gun picks up the kill in return. Exhaust comes out from Rydal onto Reckless, keeping him back just for the moment. Exter comes back, stops his recall. Sam from the side, looks to pick up another kill onto Reckless. Fish up Raj comes down, several minions on the wave room, and has that reduced damage. Another Mystic Shot comes out, and that was a one for two trade. Yes, but now we've got Young Buck in the top lane pushing that down. That's not a good fight there for smart people. They are behind as a result. Samix basically needs to make a pushing advantage off this, but actually he's going to get caught by the death sentence. Box being popped. Agony's Embrace goes down, and Samix is kind of just uh, kiting this out. Shook will go aggressive, and I feel like Unlimited only needed to contribute an auto attack there. Yeah, I guess he was just, well, maybe he was just throwing out the death sensor to scare Ezreal and didn't think he could, like, all in that scenario, so he might have not, you know, figured that they were able to, but the damage calculation from Shook was actually way ahead of him, and that was a fantastic hook. We've actually seen Unlimited land some crazy hooks so far in the Challenger series, and I guess they, it was just a bit of miscoordination from the team, but yeah, it definitely could have translated into a kill. Currently 4k ahead, they, Copenhagen Wolves are in good shape, picking up an extra kill, and also the, t uh, the two extra kills, an extra tower, and also leading in the CS, but with Reckless being slightly behind, it has bought smart people some time to get themselves into the mid late game, because um, Ash won't be snowballing quite as hard as we've seen in previous uh, in previous best of threes through the rest of the series, so we'll see how this works out for smart people, they have that window of opportunity to kind of make something happen. Yeah, and they always have this capacity to kite so long as they don't get themselves locked down, it's going to be a very kind of daring game. Can you know? Uh, can you avoid the ash hour when it comes? Can you bait it out? And indeed, in the uh, top lane there. So I thought there was something going on because I saw, I saw Kennen's energy popping up and down really, really fast. So I assumed he was spamming loads of abilities, and he was. But he was clearing minions. Um, so uh, this dragon is probably going to go in the favor of Copenhagen Wolves, and you can look to see. The smart people that shoving in the mid lane will throw in that ultimate speculatively, but not going to happen. However, Jerem in this top lane does now have a bit of a window to get some pushing done. Young Buck will be there shortly, and Ari is in the bottom lane. He has that teleport, can join the mid fight if necessary, but it's not going to happen. Now we have uh, Jerem just backing up. 
Yeah, two big ultimates used there. Um, Enchanted Trust and Ira came across, and the Frozen Tomb. So if they want to go for the counter in the shape, this might be what they're looking for. Flag and Drag comes down, lands onto two along with the Crescendo, and Teleport comes onto the flag as well. From Esther coming in with the Spirit Rod, picks up another kill. One charge left, moves on to Esther, lands a perfect charm. Shook looking to push back Samux with some damage, and Esther now on the front lines. Esther holds up with the, uh, the Circle of Frost, picks up a kill. Zeromash is landing a perfect shuriken straight out of the Zonyas. Youngbrook following him quick. On the on the chase now jumps it straight into the middle of three people slicing maelstrom finally pop hits down young but shook now trading off with Aratus picks up the kill and that's a two for free trade overall in favor of Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, and again, it just felt a little bit like there was kind of a 4v5 and then young buck appeared at the end and just kind of uh, made sure they won the fight overall so. Nice initiation there, and good play by Exeter on the whole, but he did maybe put himself a little bit too close to the tower. Got himself pinned down a little bit there, so uh, good play overall, but Copenhagen Wolves doing a very, very good job at the moment. Reckless kind of is getting dumped on quite a lot, actually, here. People are just jumping on him and just looking to take him out very, very quickly, but sometimes it's not working out so well. They are maybe overcommitting a little bit, considering that now... Yes, he's reckless. Yes, he's a very good player of an AD carry, but he's Ash, and if he's blown his arrow cooldown and he's behind like this, he's not going to do that much damage at this stage. Maybe he's not such a priority target as, say, Lysandra or even Evelyn on that Shook. Wait. Yeah, Shook on that Evelyn, I think, is the right, <laughs> right, uh, right way to put it. But yeah, right now on paper, it looks like uh, X, um, X Giants or Smart People should be able to go for these team fights and win out because. They go for the right initiations, but something in the team fight always goes wrong. Copenhagen Wolves just play it really well and then pick up a kill in return. For some reason, the Sandra animation for Zonis is still going because she got killed like at the very instant she came out. Chanted Crystal Arrow comes across mid lane, doesn't tag anyone, but it was worth the arrow. It has what cooldown is it? 82 seconds. So as long as if they can get a pick with the arrow, because right now, even though they are winning these fights very slightly, they're not confident in the fact that they could just 5v5 fight and then win because the AD carry isn't doing so hard. Yes, Shook has some damage, but they need to get some farm up before they can 100% win those fights. So what they're looking to do is instead pick up some um, pickups with, you know, an Ash arrow or like a frozen tomb if they catch someone else in position. Yeah, and they have so much potential to make that kind of play work. They just have all that single target lockdown, and they have the stealth. So, yeah, very, very strong potential in that respect. You've got to be very, very careful if you're extra right now, who appears to be looking to play a kind of split push game. Very reminiscent of Dignitas UK, who like to do uh, much the same thing with Cook My Sock on Ari. Takes that teleport and then split pushes for his team. He... Yeah, it generally, it's very predicated on doing well early on, but Ari, if she's ahead, with that Deathfire Grasp, with that Abyssal Scepter, she will be. She's a very competent duelist, and only really Renekton can probably deal with him. And actually, Renekton probably can't kill him unless there's, uh, you know, some help there from the Invisible Evelyn. But again, as with all split pushing, that is the danger when you're against Evelyn. Yeah, extra just waiting in the in the wings in that brush, and actually Evelyn doesn't commit, just assuming that uh, extra just left the lane. And in fact, extra sticking around, maybe waiting until they show their faces around mid lane. The wards come down from Atratos as well, just to make sure that if they do pass through that route, then Ari can just pop out and carry on pushing. Extra still waiting there, so they are kind of uh, thinking of a play to happen. They are moving around the Baron area, but uh, X is kind of just still chilling out. Yep, he's going to carry on pushing the side lane, so the main goal of the rest of his team is just kind of keep them preoccupied in mid, but with Ken and Top as well, they might just instantly react to Ari. I've got to be honest, my main goal at the moment is for Exila to die so that Zonya's sound can stop, but yeah. um, I, I, live in, I live in hope of your death. I'm sorry, Exila, but regardless... Shook is going to be uh, coming around to this blue buff. Going to be getting that almost uncontested, I'm sure. But uh, Exeter here is going to have an opportunity to push quite hard. Shook could be coming down to him, though. And he doesn't know where he is. So he's actually going to have to back off before really doing more than just chipping away at that. I think maybe this is, this is going to be difficult for smart people right now because they're having a lot of difficulty in that kind of vision control game. And if only you knew, young buck. Yeah, and the... <laughs> The fact he stuck around so long was uh, probably why Youngwood just assumed he'd already gone back and recalled. So, yeah, always pays to check the brush. So many people recall in that place. Ash Harrow coming down mid lane. They do have Unlimited and Exler there to follow up. But this is going to be a 3 versus 2. Lands onto Sona. 
But this isn't the initiate they want, and it was kind of an interesting Ash there. It's a bit ultimate to burn, especially when they are at the stage where they could, if they, you know, go for a good initiate, they could actually pick off some, uh, some key targets. And using that in the situation where it's going to be a 3v2 regardless, kind of interesting. It's one of the odd temptations with the Ash Arrow because it's such a powerful skill. So, so powerful and it's on quite a long cooldown. But if you can land that kind of, you know, clairvoyant shot from across the map, it's 3.5 seconds stun. That's so, so powerful that, you know, it's very, very tempting to always do that. But the thing is, if you miss, then unless you have a very defensive team that can afford to avoid engages, well, you've just wasted a very big cooldown and you're going to have to play incredibly defensive for a while afterwards. In this situation, though, Copenhagen Woods can afford to kind of spend that cooldown speculatively. They don't need to wait for the guaranteed shot. So, uh, yeah, they are possibly costing themselves a small amount of, uh, of potential uh, victories here, but it's not costing them that much. They don't need to be worrying about uh, being engaged on. Yeah, it's interesting from smart people and the entire game in general because this is the third dragon now going to Cap uh, Copenhagen Wolves and hasn't even been contested at all. And it's because both of the teams don't want to go for the team fights because even though good initiates come out from smart people, they always backfire. And from Co uh, Co uh, Copenhagen Wolves, they don't always want to go for those fights because uh, they're not strong enough to you know, fully win them 100%. So we're kind of just at the stage where it's just like, okay, we'll let you take the dragon, we'll carry on farming. The Copenhagen Wolves don't want to go for the fight. So we've been at the same situation for a good five minutes. And it's all down to maybe seeing a pick and seeing if they can convert that into uh, in, either into another objective or something bigger than that isn't just a flesh wound. Yeah, but uh, it's worth noting that this is also a very good strategy to counter how good Copenhagen Wolves is... Uh team fighting has been because they're just going with a double split push at the moment. Kennen in the top lane, Ari in the bottom lane. So long as they keep the pressure on, and so long as nobody gets caught out by Shook, they should be good to go. Continuing to pressure this means that they just don't have to worry nearly so much about getting into a 5 on 5 fight and, well, frankly, getting outplayed. And I've got to say though, Exter keeps hiding in this brush and yes, that's a valid strategy. Yes, if you can catch someone out, he can burst them, but I think that Copenhagen Wolves, when they see him come out, this is I think the third time he's done this, they're going to start thinking, well actually, next time he disappears from bot lane pushing, we should just kind of check that rush with a, say, a death sentence. Yeah, and they will just collapse onto that area, either in that brush or the one right next to the tower as well. Are he still waiting around, and Copenhagen Wolves are still grouped up as well. They are fishing for a kill. And uh, that's very reminiscent of some of the OGN games where Blaze just like to go for a very strong split co uh, split push composition and just keep up the pressure. As soon as Copenhagen Wolves group up though and actually go for a team fight or force an objective, it forces them to come back into mid lane. And if they haven't had sufficient farm or their team fight isn't strong enough because um, in Copenhagen Wolves, their team competition scales harder, then they start winning. It's all about kind of stopping that split pushing potential. Meanwhile, bot lane, Ari is just around the corner and immediately sees Youngbuck and actually teleports away. Youngbuck looking for the Ruthless Predator interrupts the teleport. Meanwhile, the fight should be kicking off. Unlimited lands the death sentence onto Rhydon. Black from Jerome, locking up Reckless once again. Looks to pick up the kill. Goes into the Zonius, ticking down the Ignite. Finally picks up with one of the last ticks. And double kill comes down for Esler while all that was kicking off. One for two trade. And uh, Ari looks like it escaped from Renekton as well. Yeah, but Young Buck is in full, you know, full good health right now, so he's just going to shove this mid lane hard. They know they have a small window now where they can hopefully apply this pressure, and that was kind of a mixed bag there from uh, from smart people. They're team fighting. Ezreal didn't seem to put down a lot of damage, and Artatros overcommitted. And I think the key factor is that they committed on the grounds that they were expecting Ari to appear and to support them. So Youngbuck stopping that teleport was key. In fact, there, Youngbuck getting charmed out, but uh, he's just so tanky right now. He's not going down in a hurry. Yeah, now that uh, Wolves are going for those fights, they will eventually win them, no matter, well, I wouldn't say no matter the scenario, but as long as they're like 4 versus 4 or 3 versus 3, they should win. Um, just because of how far ahead they are in terms of gold. And the, also the disruption from Youngbuck was really good. It was just like he walked past Ari. I think he went through the brush and realised it was Ari there as well. Limited lands of death sentence into the flame, but gets completely deleted. Youngbuck also gets locked up with the flag of Dracula. Shadow comes across. I'm not sure if they want to start focusing Youngbuck under the tower though, but great pick onto Unlimited as he was stuck in that kind of uh, that crevice between the tower and the wall. 
Yeah, and that's a dirty word, but they're going to be pushing down this mid tower now, so uh, it should be easy to do. Shooks is actually coming around the backside. Are Copenhagen Wolves going to look for the 4v5 engage here? Jarvan certainly does. Ash Arrow down on Exter, who is now in a lot of trouble. A world of hurt and a frozen tomb for Boot. He's going to get taken out, and Jerem is being chased out by Shook. He's going to go down very, very shortly. Ash picks up a double kill. The Zonias is popped by Jerem, but it's not going to achieve anything. The double kill for Lissandra, and then a clean wow. ace. Pick up by Shook, 4v5. Such a good engage. Reckless kicked it off with the Ash Arrow, and uh, honestly, smart people just committed. They were like, actually, we could probably win this. Young Fox down to about a third HP. Yes, he popped the Dolmas, but we can carry on fighting. Shook lands a perfect Agnes and Braids onto two or three people, has the shielding to actually carry on the back line, and they couldn't focus anyone else with the Evelyn wailing uh, away at them. Seven, one, and six is something you can't ignore, and being so tanky with the Agnes and Braids, they just had to carry on focusing Evelyn, even though it was just all shielding. So they picked up a perfect team fight, five for one overall with Unlimited the only one uh, dropping before that team fight kicked off. And honestly, the fact that Unlimited died won them the team fight. Yeah, it kind of baited them out, but props uh, to Rector once again for a brilliant arrow. Taking advantage of the fact that Exeter hasn't gotten the uh, Zonia's Hourglass at this point, he was hit with that arrow and just not able to contribute to that entire fight. Just so, so good there. and. Again, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory, it was so unfortunate for smart people having that big opportunity and then kind of throwing it away. And now we've got the problem. Reckless is starting to get his decent farm up. He's starting to get more kills. He's starting to get, well, we've got that Baron buff for one thing. So he's starting to be much more of a team fight uh, problem. Shook is getting aggressive on Jeremy. He's actually taking him down really, really low. Zonius has been popped, though. May have overcommitted. Teleport coming in from Ari, and the Lantern is down, but it's not going to happen. Nice counter engage there. Shook overcommitting a little bit. Yeah, he was looking for the pick and just kind of uh, stomp out there uh, and solidify their advantage, but that has put them slightly behind at this stage, and this might be converted into the first dragon from uh, smart people as well. Jungler down, there is no smite, and it's not like they want to go for the team fight either, so reclaiming a bit of gold and a kill in return as well is nothing really, uh, nothing really they'll be too unhappy about. And really, right now, they just can't go for fights. We've seen, actually, from the last team fight, that 4 versus 5 can heavily go into, uh, into Wolves' favour. So they might just wait out the death timer from Shook. And from their perspective, even though they might lose, they still have to go for fights. Because with the kind of pseudo-blue build that Ezreal has gone, um, and the kind of traditional AD carry build that Ash has currently, he will eventually start to outscale him. Um, Jungle trading off the extra, I'm not sure if he can fully commit, but Unlimited from the side, and that doesn't quite connect the death sentence, but right now it's it's a ticking time bomb for them because Ash's damage will vamp up higher than Ezreal if we get to like six item build. So they kind of have to do something in the mid game because they have itemized around that. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, they might get a pick here. Death, um, Dark Passage comes out and again, just not committing. Yeah, it's worth noting though that with that pseudo blue build that Ezreal has gone for, Yes, they're not going to have quite as strong of a straight-up teamfight where everyone's engaged, everyone's in range, but they still have this ability to really punish anyone who gets caught out by something. So all it takes is one charm to land, and the follow-up is so brutal, they can get taken out very, very quickly indeed. You know, Exila and Reckless are the targets they will look for. That's going to mean that if they don't get engaged upon themselves, they will poke and poke and poke and potentially look for a victory. But the problem is now Copenhagen Wolves have so much potential to engage. They're so strong right now. Exter going to be getting frozen tombs and this a slicing maelstrom just gets nuked down before it ever stuns anyone. Samus in the back line going to be looking to try and take out Shook, but it's frankly irrelevant. Exila is in the middle of everyone. Samus takes Shook after all, but it's not going to matter. Unlimited is tanking this tower, and Samus is just, he's just trying desperately to blink away at them. Yeah, but it's just, it's like throwing rubber bands at a crocodile, and that's quite literally what it is. GG well played gets called as the surrender boat comes in. First game picked up very confidently by Copenhagen Wolves, bringing that to 1 and 0 in the best of 5 series. Yeah, and I would just like to mention one thing. Uh, that last fight mostly kicked off because Ari flashed to try and catch out Lissandra and actually did not manage to do so. But it's worth noting that when you're as behind as smart people were in this situation, making hyper-aggressive plays, making plays that have a relatively low chance of success is actually a very logical thing to do because if you don't 
go for those plays. If you just continue playing safely, you're just going to get crushed in slowly but surely. And it's better to try, kind of take that risk, maybe pull something back. But regardless, that is the first game of the best of five, as you mentioned. And we will be just getting the players into the next lobby. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just hold on to your seats for a brief time. If you want, you can get a cup of tea and we'll see you in a minute.